one area that I'm confident that there will be an agreement on is in relation to governance. I think that is actually, of all the different areas, one of the least difficult. There are others that are much more difficult. Um, uh, Argentina, well, I understand that you're saying that I'm not good enough, for, and, and I, uh, um, and I apologise, but... Well, I didn't say you're not but, good enough. Uh, well, you said it's not good enough, but, but, there, the, the, but there is a real difficulty for the UK. Yes, we could march around with great big boots on and tell everybody you know, what they should do. We, we could try and fix an agreement between the two sides. But that's actually Alexander Downer's job. That's the job of the, of the UN. Uh, I think we have to be, I, I'm afraid, uh, you know, I'd love to make a speech in which I said uh, I could argue for this particular aspect of this particular policy and so on. But it wouldn't help achieve anything because I think almost, uh, the, uh, the only thing that it would do is it would unite everybody in hating the British. Um, and, uh, and I don't think that that would work. What we can do is we can push for certain confidence building measures. One of the things that I've been trying to push for is for opening the crossing at Dimitis. Um, now, I think, um, as I understand it from my Greek friends, um, the money is now available from the Greek side to be able to do that. It would be good if the money was available to be able to do that from the, from the Turkish side as well. Um, there are other confidence building measures that we try through the High Commission to, you know, to, to help with. Um, because my basic assumption is the more um, young um, Greek Cypriots and young Turkish Cypriots work together in common projects, the more likely it is that you build trust rather than undermine trust. Um, I, somebody asked, uh, yes, you asked, because you asked about um, are Britain and Turkey playing an important enough role. I actually think that there will come a point, and th this isn't, I, I can never remember whether this is British policy or not, but it's my policy. Um, and, um, but I, there will come a point at which finance will come into this in a big way. Um, and I think that that is a time when the European Union and Turkey will probably have to step up to the plate financially to, to resolve some of those problems. I can't see Greece at the moment um, finding any <laughs> financial support. Um, the, um, na uh, the gentleman over there, you said about um, the, uh, the fine line um, and all that. Um, you're absolutely right. I think it's, it's, it's wrong that, um, that you can't send your post direct and that there are not flights available and so on. I'd love to see that opened. Um, we worked very hard in earlier years to try and achieve that. Um, we didn't achieve it with the rest of the European Union. Um, but, of course, we've got to look at ways of making sure that um, people not only have the, the element of freedom that they now have, of course, of travelling um, freely in and out um, of the Republic and, um, and therefore being able to travel onwards, um, but being able to do so directly. And I would also like to see the ports open. I'd like to see the Ankara protocol fulfilled. So, yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, oh, uh, is Turkish Cypriot isolation, well, that's the same point, isn't it, really, the young lady was raising the back. Disillusionment, I mean, it, it's interesting, before I went to Cyprus, I was very depressed about the prospects of um, uh, a solution. When I met with the leaders, I was very encouraged, very encouraged. When I met with some journalists, I was very depressed. Um, <laughs> Sorry, there's lots of journalists, and you should never take on a journalist. But um, uh, when I talked to other people on the island, I felt very encouraged by some of those involved in trade unions and other organisations. Um, sometimes back here in the UK, I felt that some of the communities have adopted a more stringent attitude than the communities back on the island. Um, and that's made me more depressed again. So I'm afraid I go through this, this um, wave of... Uh, exhilaration and hope and disillusionment just as everybody else does on the island. But the real danger is that if later on this year talks have collapsed and there's no prospect for the future, then people will want to resort to other means. Um, uh, yes, I do want to be impartial. Um, we want to be actively impartial, if that makes any kind of sense. Uh, it, 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 you're abs I can't remember who it was who was saying that should we just be leaving this up to the two leaders? Of course not. We need to try and make sure that there's a culture, um, uh, an international support for the process. Um, that uh, one of the things I've actively been trying to do is also trying to make sure that people are committed to having more meetings. Because I think until you have an intensity of the meetings, it's more difficult 
actually to, uh, between the leaders, it's more difficult to actually make those concessions and those compromises because otherwise you tend to get stuck in the silo of either talking about governance or about property or whatever and you don't actually start making the concessions between the different elements. So that's why one of the things that we've been actively supporting is trying to more intense um, meetings, which there have been some fo so far already this year, and um, I'd like to see more. Um, sometimes, uh, yes, it does feel as if uh, one is caught between the two sides, but it's difficult to see how, how you can do anything else as the UK. Um, as I've tried to say, in terms of the Treaty of Guarantee, we stand ready if the <coughs> leaders and the communities feel that there is something that needs to change about the Treaty of Guarantee, when we, then we stand ready to talk about it. But I think us determining from the outset what, what, where that should end up is hardly going to help anybody. Um, in terms of, you made a very good point to think about confidence building measures in the UK, and, and that's a point I'm going to take away and think about. And what we, I mean, I've, I've, I haven't said no to a single meeting with a Turkish or Greek Cypriot group since I, I entered the job. And I, I must be now up to about 25 or 26 in four, me, four months. And when you consider that I have all of Europe, Latin America, Russia, Central Asia, Australasia, Oceania, and all consular services in the world, um, that Cyprus is, is you know, one of my top two, three priorities that I'm determined if there's anything I could possibly do to help achieve a solution, then I will do so. Um, And whatever else I, we can do to help in that, then, you know, please, um, you know, we, we will do that. Um, the, uh, Ken, I don't think you were taking offence at <coughs> what I was saying about you, uh, an element of mischief in your eyes. Um, the, um, the, but, uh, if I could keep the foreign Commonwealth Office worried, I've achieved my purpose. <laughs> I, I think I rest my case there. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, and I'm certainly not anti-Turk, um, and uh, I'm, I'm not anti-Greek. I'm pro-solution. I mean, that's the basic. I know that sounds like a terrible slogan, but I am just pro-solution, and I am determined to be so. And I, why I started this evening by talking about places where I've lived and worked, where there are divided communities, um, it's for that very reason that I think that it is possible to reach forward. Um, to achieve something. Um, in terms of the sovereign bases and, and that element, the, um, the, 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 we, we believe that the sovereign bases uh, are, rest on the basis of the 1960 Treaty of Settlement, um, not on the Treaty of Guarantee. So it, it, it's a slightly different issue, I think. But as I've said many times, and I hope nobody will misunderstand me or add any words, Kyriakos, <laughs> Um, to, uh, to what I'm saying, um, I, you know, I would like to see an island, and I hope that this is not just pie in the sky, um, I'd like to see a united island, a united city, um, I think that, that means that people will have to make concessions and they will have to do so courageously, um, and, um, and I hope that nobody will be in any doubt that the British government is not on one side or on the other, it's just pro a solution. And I'm sorry that I've now got to run away, but the people of the Rhonda are beginning to wonder whether I'm more interested in Cyprus than I am um, in the Rhonda. So thank you. Oh no, sorry, and I have two more points to make. One is, I see that Eddie O'Hara is here, and, and I really do want to pay tribute to... Um, Eddie's long-standing commitment because yeah. I, I, I don't, Eddie's not standing at the end, I think, at the general election. Um, so I do want to pay tribute to him, but I also want to pay tribute to my close friend Joan. I've worked with Joan on not only on these issues, but on um, even more important issue, which is trying to get the Labour Party re-elected to government. Um, and um, so, uh, but but that's a much easier issue than solving the situation in Cyprus. So. Uh,